to another episode of The Profile. I'm Gary Dunn, I'm your host, and I'm sitting in this chair. In the comfy chair tonight, we have one Mr. Peter Williams. Legend How are you, Gary? How are you, mate? Yeah, good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> Likewise, Pete, thanks for coming in. Do you mind if I call you Pete Please or it? Peter? Or oh, it doesn't worry, doesn't mate. <laughs> Usually people swear at me. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I heard the producer in there before having a go at you about something. <laughs> I'll be easy on you. <laughs> cool. Where were you born, Peter? In Christchurch in New Zealand. Right. New Zealand. New Zealand. New <laughs> Zealand. Sax. Uh, what was the address? Was it Sax? Um, it was, no, oh, there was, no, there wasn't any six, six in it. No, no sixes. No sixes. 66. 66. <laughs> no, it was number 40 Garlands Road. Yeah. And the, that thing you see on Facebook where it says, who was your first pet? And it becomes your porn name, right? It was Garland Road, it was, and the pet was Bimbo. <laughs> Bimbo Garland was my porn name. Okay, Bimbo. Um, <laughs> do you play any instruments? Or, uh, we know you sing. So. I play guitar. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And not, badly. Badly. Yeah. <laughs> I heard that badly. <laughs> right there. So, um, what was the turning point in your life where you said to yourself, well, "This is what I'm going to do: sing and be a." A rock star. Well, the interesting thing about it was that for years, when I you know, started playing in bands and yeah. all that, my friends used to say to me, what are you going to do when you need a real job? And that hovered over me for 20 years, okay. right through some of the career and everything, because wow. I never really considered a real job. And then 20 years later, you thought, well, hang on, this is my career. <laughs> <laughs> so um, did you, you, you start singing at school? or what? How did that, you were your parents? Um, My musical? mother used to sing around the house all the time. Yeah, you know, and uh, I think she influenced me. You know? Yeah, <laughs> and that, that was your biggest influence to that point. Yeah, it, yeah. it was. Yeah. yeah, strange as it may seem, there's and I, I when I started to learn guitar, I actually never ever thought of, of you know playing in a band or didn't know much about bands. Yeah. I just thought I want to learn to play guitar and so I'd go to parties and pick up checks, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I remember being in a shop in Adelaide one time and they said, you know, we don't know whether to buy the Nintendo or the guitar pack because we could only afford one, the parents and the kids standing there. And the salesman comes up and goes, um, look, I don't know anyone who got to level five on Nintendo and pulled seven different chicks a week. <laughs> they bought the guitar I pack. like that. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> 1960, your first band in New Zealand, The Silhouettes. The Silhouettes in Christchurch, yeah. Yep. Just a little, what you would call a garage band now. Yeah. And um, just just friends, really, and we did the odd gig. Yeah. And then uh, it says you joined Max Merritt in the Meteors. Yeah. They're from New Zealand. Pardon? Max Merritt was... Yeah, yeah, yeah he yeah. was a, a local... Uh, he was actually very uh, big in those early days, yeah. way back, because he, he was like a rocket. His name, like Max Merritt, was a yeah. rock and roll name. Yes. And uh, I used to go to his rock and roll dances. And when he went to my guitar teacher looking for a guitarist to replace the one that was leaving, and he said, who's your best pupil? And the uh, guitar teacher said, well, and it was a girl. She was a very, very good guitar yes. player, but he didn't want a girl in the band. So I got the gig. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that changed your life. So you actually toured with the Rolling Stones, didn't you? We toured with the Rolling Stones. So we, when we came to Australia in 60, late 64, um, we then, in 66, we were doing all the gigs around town and that, and in Sydney. And then we, 66, we toured with the Stones. Wow. What, can you tell us some stories about that? What was that experience Well, like? it, it, as someone asked me the other day about it, and the Stones then, even though they were world famous and we all knew their songs and all that, but they were just another band because yeah. we all used the same guitar, uh, the same gear. Yeah. I used um, Keith Richards' amp, and he had on his amp, uh, he had a Fender Twin, little black markings, yeah. you know, like the settings yeah. for uh, satisfaction. everyone would come and... and yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, you get off my cloud. And then, <laughs> so it, and then um, well, before that, I didn't touch him, yeah. but, so I, just, I used his amp. Yeah. Yeah. Sound all right? Yeah, it was excellent. Actually, the, I've, I've actually got a, a, a sound track someone sent me recently of the Stone on that tour in Adelaide. Wow. And the, they were a good band. Mm. The oh, Stone, fantastic. You know, they, everyone says they're a good band now, yeah. but they were a good band then. Good band then. So you came to Australia in 64, um, toured with the Rolling Stones. 
and then you were the backing group on the national uh, bandstand. Yes, yes, um, yep. which I believe we might see a clip later. I believe so. Something like that. So oh, you, it'll be easy to recognise me. Yes. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember seeing you live, the brown hair. And yeah, the, that's right. You know, like. <laughs> oh no, I just dye my hair this colour. Yeah. Just so guys like you don't feel bad. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you made me feel much better. Yes. I don't feel as old. <laughs> Sorry, Gary. No, it's all right. So you 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 were toured with Billy Thorpe, Ray Brown, and the Whispers, Merv Benton, and Benton. Jade Hurley, and yeah, um, wow, well, big names. Yeah, they were big names back then, and. The, the clip you'll see later on yeah. um, is that was actually done here in Perth at the Capitol Theatre. Wow. And it was, uh, it was Ray Purvis was mixing the right. sound. Yeah. And it was the oh, first Ray. time any of us had been mixed with front of house mix. So that we came to little old Perth as it was in those mm. days, came here to be mixed front of yeah. house. We're, and the massive desks that became and yeah. we've gone full circle now playing in duos we do our own mixing. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> no, exactly what you mean. <laughs> so you formed a band called The Groove. Yep. You won a battle of sound competition to the UK. That was the first prize. Yeah, yeah. That was Hoadley's Battle of the Sound. <sighs> wow, well, Hoadley's we had everything uh, covered in those days. Oh, every, band, every musician around about my age they all were in that competition. You it know, was a Violet Crumble, wasn't it? Violet Crumble. And you yeah. know what? We won it, and one of the mentions on the prize was that you, all the Violet Crumbles and the <laughs> other thing they made where it was all you can eat. Can eat. I never got one. <laughs> <laughs> I could make a phone call for you. I know someone. <laughs> no, so you recorded, you went to England. Yeah. Recorded at Abbey Road Studio. Yes, and yep. it was, you were there when the Beatles recorded. Yeah, the Beatles were... Right? Always there, and one of the sort of interesting aspects was that someone showed us in Abbey Road that the Beatles had one sh quite big room, absolutely stacked to the rafters with equipment, mm. and because every guitar manufacturer and amplifier man and that gave it's the Beatles stuff. gave it to free, so in case they played it. <laughs> <yeah. laughs> I watched a program the other the other week, and uh, where they were all sitting in separate rooms with, with tapes, and and their thing, you know, someone had to have their finger on the tape to make this special sound, and and um, yeah, they, they can't be repeated, what oh. what they did. Oh right, was, yeah. The, it, well, the, so, I I just don't I don't know. People don't realise how good they were. Yeah, they were so creative. Those guys. Did you so, did you walk across the crosswalk and? No, I, I was telling someone just the other day, I, the guitarist from the groove, Rod Stone, I, I spoke to him recently and I says, how come we never had our photograph taken on the, you know, the zebra crossing? He says, that's a simple case. He says, we recorded there just before they walked the crossing. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I, I could never work out why we didn't do yeah, it. Yeah, of course. And you actually met the Beatles in New Zealand in 64. We met the Beatles back. in New Zealand, yeah, in 64 when they toured. We decided to be band moles and, and booked into the same hotel as them <laughs> just so we could mix and, you know. Yeah. And they were very congenial and, yeah. um, you know, said hi. And then, so then we, or two of us, not Max and me, but uh, two of the other guys were asked to, to put on great coats and pull, you know, pull the collars up and run out to the limousines out the front of the hotel while the Beatles went down the, um, so, fire escape yeah to get to the, to the show and um so but the, the thing about that was the you know the, the fans were just all over the limos but the ones that were closest to the windows could, could see it wasn't the beatles <laughs> and they were very angry at the, <laughs> <laughs> the <guys. laughs> yeah. yeah they would have been huh so um after that 69 you joined uh, the mixtures yes i joined the mixtures in, um, in england who was in the band then um, Mick Flynn was uh, bass and yeah. um, Freddie Wheeland All right. it was on guitar and Freddie was there you know, in the band for years. Yeah. Um, they were going through a bit of a lineup change. Uh, Don Lebler was who was with Axiom. Yeah. He was on drums. Um, who have we got in? Me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when I, oh, well, Idris Jones, who wrote the Push Bite song. Yeah. He was uh, he's from Adelaide. But yeah. He, he left, so I joined. In the summertime, uh, you co-wrote Captain Zero. Yes, I wrote co-wrote Captain one Zero. One of my favourite songs. But I, I remember where, exactly where I was when I first heard the Bruce really? Blake song. Yeah. Where were you? Uh, in Wyala, in, in oh, South right. Australia. No, yeah. I, I remember that pub in Wyala. We did it with Westlands. Huge pub. 
Yeah, yeah. Huge pub and a great pub. Yeah. yeah you, very memorable that was. Because you would have done the Damon Circuit. Yeah, we did the Damon Circuit. Pubs. Yeah. I remember hassling my mum, I think I was only 12 or something, I want to go and see the mixtures. And, uh, oh, cool. <laughs> the cool could, thing about it is in. that people have asked me, because you like Captain Zero, yeah. I'll tell you where that song came Please. from. Is that there was a, there was a, Ross Wilson's first band in Australia was a band called Party Machine. Yeah. And uh, the drummer was a guy called Peter Curtin. And when our drummer got sick in England for a couple of months, Peter Curtin joined the groove for a while and played. Yeah. And he, he'd just, believe this or not, it's true, he'd just come back from a touring English band that had just toured Transylvania. <laughs> <laughs> they just they toured Transylvania. <laughs> Unbelievable. And he said, yeah, we're just doing an album about superheroes. You know, Captain Marvel and all these people. Mm. And uh, Wonder Woman, that did this whole album. And I thought, oh, I might write a song about my own superhero. Yeah? Captain Zero. <laughs> Captain Zero. Well, it was unreal. A great song. It was on, it was on top of the pops and yeah. all that sort yeah. of stuff. Yeah, it's funny you should say Transylvania because Dracula, the bikey group in Adelaide were called Alicards, which was Dracula spelled backwards. Oh, right, so. right. <laughs> How cool is that? Yeah, it just came to my head then. <laughs> and the funny thing about Transylvania is I've, I've read, re not too recently, 20 mm. years ago, that it was years later that they realised for touristy things they they should make Dracula mementos so tourists going through could buy because they didn't bother about it, you know, mm. even though all the stories about Dracula were... Yeah. It's amazing, you know. Cash in, like <laughs> everyone else. So you, you you became a touring band with the mixtures uh, due to the success of the singles and, and were pulling quite large crowds, yeah. I presume. Yeah, you had yeah. lots of... I remember we did a tour of Ireland once, yeah. and talking about Captain Zero, yeah. and um, this black West Indian guy came up to me in Ireland, he says, hey, he says, hey man, how come you did not sing Captain Zero? It's my favourite song. And I said, where are you from? And he said, the West Indies. And I said, it was, he said, there was a hit there. You know? So I didn't know that. Wow. The royalty still coming in, there must be. Oh, not, not many. But the, actually, I got a bit of a royalty check recently because a groove song was used on that current television show, Love Child. All right. And yeah. so one of the songs, and I was quite impressed. I wow. Got a little bit of money, you know. <laughs> Buy the wife some flowers, you know, yeah. to appease her. <laughs> <laughs> Which wife are you talking about? Uh, okay. We're talking about number four. Number four. Wow. I've been married four times. Wow. Alan met the... Uh, the old one, the other, oh, we can't say old. She'll probably, uh, <laughs> You'll be in the trouble. Earlier one. <laughs> <laughs> the earlier one. <laughs> um, just uh, no cups in here tonight. So That's um, cool, isn't I, it? I thought I'd grab Phil's camera lens. And, uh, That's cool, have a drink. Thanks, Trawny. Um, okay, so bass player Mick Finn. Mick Flynn, he yeah. left the band to form Springfield's Revival, which was Dusty Springfield's Dusty Springfield, brother. Dusty Springfield, yeah, brother. Yeah. Um, he, in fact, he managed them. Okay, yep. Um, uh, what was his name? Whatever it was, I don't remember, but yeah. he was in the original Springfield's. Yeah. Dusty Springfield's brother, yeah. Uh, Tom, Tom, Tom Springfield. We yeah. all knew that, didn't we? But I don't, I don't think their name was Springfield. I think that got, that was a stage name, wasn't it, Springfield? Her stage name. Yeah, Dusty someone or other. I don't know. Yeah. Get, I don't know. Get my producer to look that one up so we can clear that one up quickly. So <laughs> so Mick Flynn's uh, replacement, Chris Spooner, was in the Honeycombs. Yes, he uh, was he played with the Honeycombs. And they did that song, um Have I the Right. Oh, right. Yeah, Actually right. I, I just realised too, he also was in a band with um uh, Oh, what's his name? The great guitar player. Um, uh, too old. Um, uh, Peter. 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 Peter um, oh, great guitar player. Peter. Great guitar player. Huh? Peter Frampton. Yes. <laughs> Peter yes. Frampton. Yeah, Peter Frampton. There you go. Yeah. Mark gets good the on chocolates. You, Mark. The ball the lollies. Yeah, finished, good on you, mate. <laughs> oh, okay. No more, my Just give that a ring. So. <laughs> When you get a special name. <laughs> okay, so with Peter Frampton, yeah? Yeah. He, well, he, he was drifting through one of those bands anyway, yeah. our bass player. And Chris was a mad fisherman. He was indeed. Now, I've heard this story from a couple of different people. Yeah. Uh, from Bricks and, and Yeah, from and things like. the guy that... Very yeah. sad. He, like, he, he drowned um, at Trigg here. Uh, but sadly, 
apart from dying, can't be any worse than the dying, but he had two fishing shows lined up with the ABC and Channel 7, just going to do them the week, start them wow. the week after he died. And But the other thing about it too with Chris Spooner, well, anyone who knows him, if he's a spitting image of Rex Mossop. All oh, right. <laughs> yeah, they, they, <laughs> unbelievable. Then Rex Mossop goes on to do fishing shows. Yeah. Wow. And call the footy, didn't he? And call, call the, the footy. footy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he drowned at Trigg. How unfortunate that is. Because, uh, But the band became Bricks, didn't it? After yeah. That, yeah. Or? It was called Bricks because we formed Breakaway. Breakaway and the Mixtures. And the Mixtures. So yeah. BR from Breakaway yeah. and IX from the Mixtures. Yeah. And Peko was the drummer. And John uh, Peko was Peko. the drummer. Sadly, John's gone now, yeah. but uh, he was larger than life, our John. Yeah, absolutely. We've done a few interviews with him and yeah. obviously did that concert for him and yeah. Yeah. Very, yeah. Very I well saw all that on your on your shows yeah. and I saw the interview from um from the hospital. Yeah, yeah. And I I watched the interview and I thought, you know, oh well he's struggling along there and then he'd gone with him two or three yeah. weeks after that, yeah. didn't he? We had to take about forty minutes out of that interview with all of the language and some of the things. <laughs> <laughs> that was the only show we've edited, I think. Oh no. <laughs> we had to. You know. It, uh, yeah. He had an eloquence with the, you know, with yes. the silver tongue. Didn't yes, he? he did, and he was getting great drugs in Hollywood too. <laughs> <laughs> he was nothing loving changed that. then. No. <laughs> so Paul Reynolds was we, we've interviewed. Yeah, he was Paul. the bass player he was the with bass player and Bricks. Yeah. Well, Rob Scott, Rob Scott, keyboards, and who I formed a duo with later on called Scott and Williams. Yeah, yeah that's right. It was yeah. it was good yeah, duo was, too, and that was going in Perth for quite some time actually Scott yes did we last about six years we had our own road crew and then <laughs> we turned it into a three piece and Rick Whittle oh the played octopus drums. yeah and it was fantastic wow so uh, Rob keyboards Rick drums and you sing and me on guitar yeah you, you were guitaring as well good yeah it was yeah. good because you, well, we you all can't sang. play guitar but the clip I saw on that national band stand thing you, you're playing guitar that yeah, that well that guitar that's was, live isn't it that's live yeah. yeah and that was on that guitar the 335 wasn't it 335 yeah. uh, made in 1964 I've still got it wow right and that was made in the same batch as Clapton's uh, one the crossroads 335 right. and he sold his for 860,000 US for, for charity Wow. Do you think I might? <laughs> you might get 80, 860 bucks for it. Yeah, that's or, right. Or, you know, you might get a couple of grand, actually. Oh, he's probably worth a bit. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, okay, so Bricks and Breakaway uh, and the mixtures getting together. How long did that go for? Uh, it lasted a couple of years. Mm. A couple of years. You were still doing Pinocchios and places yes, like that. Yes, we were doing Pinocchios to see at one Herdsman's time. Sunday Session. That's right. Yeah. And I think we were the first band in Perth to, to actually put a um, a, a door charge a on on charge. Sunday, 50 cents. <laughs> All right. And people said, oh, you'll, no one will pay that. <laughs> <laughs> 50 cents. 50 cents <laughs> on the door. And then all Sounds. these other bands, like your bands and that, all would have been charging four or five bucks. No, no, kept... we were two bucks and then we went to three bucks. Oh, should we go to three? <laughs> Who's going to come? Yeah. Yeah, you know. Oh, uh, well. We yeah. did it for love, didn't we? Yeah, and we still do. We still do it Nothing's for love. Nothing's changed. That's right. certainly can't make a living out of it. No, not anymore. But there's nothing like it, is there? No, I mean, yeah. well, the whole thing has changed. It's, it, we, we were fortunate to live right through those magnificent musical days when yeah. the crowds loved it and yeah. flocked along. So after that, you went back to Melbourne, joined a duo with David Briggs, who is... Uh, Little you know, River Band, yeah. yeah. LRB uh, fame. Yeah, he was, oh, so. Dave is a great mate. Of mine. What a great guy. Yes. And a great guitar player. Yeah. And a great songwriter. Yeah. Because he wrote. Brilliant um, guitar player. Yeah. Absolutely oh, brilliant. Very creative guitar yes. player. And he it always had those harmonies going. Yes. And, yeah. yeah. Oh, and a great. Oh, I mean, I just loved him as a guy. He's yeah. a top guy. Yeah. So that was good fun. Yeah. So he got kicked out probably with Glenn Shorrock and yeah, the, the rest of the uh, boys or yeah, Johnny LRB. Farnham. So or, Farnham could join you. Yeah. But to me, Glenn Shark was always the voice of mm. LRB. Yeah, some great songs. Yeah, yeah. But um, and it's sad what's happening with them at present with the the touring band in the states. That you know, not well. Apart from what's his name, the bass player. Uh, you know, there's no love lost is there between the original mm. guys and the the one that's going around. They're not a bad band. I've seen them. Yeah, they're, they're good. 
It's funny, they're like marriages, bands, aren't they? And, they what? They're, they're like marriages, you know, everyone's swapping. And, <laughs> Tell me about and, it. And, you know, I've like, been married four times. I know. So I, know yeah. all the, I know all the rules. <laughs> so back to New Zealand after that. Yeah. And you're still living in New Zealand? Still living in New Zealand. I, well, I, got, I went back um, because the wife was pregnant. Yeah. And um, so we had our baby over there because yep. we owned a house over there. And my mum had a major stroke. So I, yep. I wanted to hang around and just help my dad, you know, yep. look after her. And, you know, I, fortunately, I managed to work. And, and it's, you know, like anything, you get sort of, I'd like to come back to Perth, actually. Yeah. But, you know, we'll see what happens. So four wives, how many children, how many grandchildren? Only two children. Yeah. And it's not bad as if the other. So two of those wives didn't like me, <laughs> <laughs> but but no, two two grandchildren. Yeah, with my wow. um, uh, first daughter, and the grandchildren are thirteen and eleven. Yep, fantastic. And so you recently came back to Perth and did a reunion gig at Friends. Yes, all the. We did a reunion gig. Should I say old guys or should Friends, I? Yeah, all the, yeah, all the, the old, old guys. Crew. Well, they'll probably be listening, so I don't care. <laughs> who no, we, we who did great, that on that pardon? night? Who, who was in that? Um, well, we had uh, Rob Scott was on keyboards. Yep. Um, Paul Reynolds on bass. Yep. Um, Dennis uh, was playing. Dennis Broad? No, no, no. Dennis. Um, oh. Dennis Bird. Yeah, was yeah, playing yeah. drums. Yep. Brilliantly, I might yes. say, Dennis Bird. <laughs> and um, who else? Paul um, Miller. On, Paul Millard? Yeah, on yep. saxophone. Yeah, yeah, great absolutely. sax player. And Brendan Foster. And Brenton. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we had a, it was great. We had great gigs. Yeah. And, and that's a great venue, Isn't friends. Mm. I love that venue. Yeah, that whole vibe of having a meal and yes. it's like a bit of a show. Yeah, and thing, it was, it? in fact, I pardon me, I went there. About six years ago, when I came back to Perth for a visit, and someone took me in there, and the platters were on there. Oh wow! Right, and it wasn't obviously wasn't the, the original, original platters, yeah. but but no, the great there was show. one original member, I think. Yes, isn't it? one it original. Still, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, and uh, I loved the show, and they did the song, and I thought, oh, I love the song, and oh, I love that. That's right. Then I thought, hang on a minute, the groove recorded that. <laughs> <laughs> one of the first songs I ever recorded. Wow! And a song called "With the Spring." Wow! But uh, yeah, so. Enjoyed that. So, just moving sideways a bit. Other jobs throughout your life apart from music? Have you had to supplement your no? Music I, with I've anything, never. Really, I've always done just music. Yeah. Um, apart from when I first got back to New Zealand, the pressure was on because the wife was pregnant, and I was I was doing music, but I was also working in a, a shoe um, factory. I was working in the warehouse. All right. Like you know, stacking and packing and all that stuff, and I enjoyed it first day job I've ever had you know yeah but then again you sort of it was easier to go back to music yeah, yeah. something you enjoyed yeah so and and it was quite flourishing anyway yeah. you know can't imagine making shoes would be enjoyable but. That, <laughs> <laughs> no, that was good so if you uh, got a favorite band of all time Peter what? a lot of favorite bands um, but perhaps the Eagles yeah perhaps the Eagles um, four tops yeah, as a vocal group, you know the Eagles and but well, and the Beatles, obviously, yes. well, yeah. a sensational band, the Beatles. Yeah. What would be the favourite Perth band you saw live? Did you get to see many bands? In Perth? Oh, I've seen a lot of bands live. The favourite, well, in fact, just recently I saw Springsteen. All right. And oh, what a great show! Yeah. What a great yeah. showman! But uh, yep, so I like it all anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Um, if you were stranded on a deserted island, you could only take one album with you, what album would that be? Oh, that's a big question, isn't it? Um, just as a one-off answer for that, I went into a shop in New Zealand only about three months ago and I bought in the cheap bin, I bought, um, what's his name, uh, Michael Bolton. Yeah. Right, that guy when can sing. Yeah, what a singer that guy is. Yeah. And um, I love it. It's got all the great soul songs on it too, you know. Yeah. Ain't no mountain high enough. Yeah. And, yeah, so he covers all those songs. Doesn't yeah, he? yeah, and but he, he sings so well. He's yeah. a great singer. Well, let's hope you don't run out of power on that deserted island. Um, <laughs> 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 your favourite TV show growing up? 
Um, probably, when I think back to Sydney in the 60s, uh, it was probably uh, Get Smart. All right. Yeah. 99. 86 he was, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, 86. And uh, just, I thought it was great slapstick humour. Yeah, yeah. And um, are, you, are you currently playing and performing in New Zealand? Yeah, I still do a bit yeah. here and there. I do all sorts of things. Uh, you know, I sort of limit myself because I'm limited. Yeah. <laughs> but I do, um, I work with a full band now and again. And then I work in a duo as a solo, sometimes yeah. three piece. Just if anyone throws a gig at me and I'll just... If I think it. It was, but it's got to finish before midnight. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't work after midnight these yeah, days. Yeah. And and in the old days, you used to do like three gigs in one night, different places. Yeah, you, know, and, you do. Oh. Well, I remember playing Pinocchio's here yeah. with bricks. I think it was, and I was a mad fitness freak, right? And I used to, and I ran the Perth Marathon after getting away from Pinocchio's about half past two in the morning wow. and then having to be at the start of the marathon at 6.30 in the morning. Yeah, wow. And so I'd only had about four hours sleep and <laughs> tell you what, I never thought I was going to get to the end, you know, all the way down to Frio and back it was. But still. You got, you got there? And I'm alive still. <laughs> so, Peter, what does the future hold for you? Um, a grave. A grave. Right. <laughs> and, and a box, but I hope it's a fair way away yet, Gary, you know. Yeah. you have any unfulfilled ambitions? Or well, I'm probably very, very lucky because I'm not really. No. I've sort of done a lot. Um, writing a number one hit in America would be brilliant. Yep. But I don't think that's going to happen. Well, you never know. <laughs> Hey? If you ever get wife number five, you can write about wife number four, write a song about it, and you might be a hit. Do you know what I've actually mentioned to all my ex-wives is that I am very, very lucky that I have never had life insurance. Otherwise, one of them would have done me in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you collect anything? Uh, not really. I collect fishing gear. Fishing I'm a gear. man fisherman, and I'll, anything to do with fishing, I'll collect. And so I try to collect the fish off the hook. You know? <laughs> So Chris Spooner obviously rubbed yeah, off Chris, on you he in, did. in some sort of way. He did. He, he was a, a fantastic fisherman yeah. and with a lot of knowledge. And, and in fact, he probably, as a kid, I fished, yeah. but he influ influenced me back into it. You know? yeah. When we toured around Australia with the mixtures, we, we had a boat on, and we swapped the boat every now and then, a little dinghy. And we had our fishing gear with us everywhere, so it was more important <laughs> what the fish. fishing was like than what the gig was like. You might be in Mackay in Queensland or Cairns or something, but it was most important for the... Absolutely. Number one. So what would you put on your gravestone then, Peter? Um, I haven't thought about that, really. Um, I always remember, I can diverse to him, that he always said to me, oh, when I die, can you put, um, I told you I wasn't well, you know, yes. which is a well, yeah. well-worn one on his, and when he died, I sort of, you know, I, I, it was a bit hard to, yeah, to, to do it because his family was in England and all that, mm. so I didn't do that. And with mine, I, you know, uh, I don't know what I'd put on there, you know, I'm not here yet, you know? Yeah, okay, that's fair enough. Is there anybody that you would recommend for us to have on the show? Like, Anyone re re that you would recommend for us to have on this show? On the show? Yeah. Anyone you think is worthy of interviewing? or? Well, you, you mostly it's Perth guys, but yep. you know, I've got some real desperado friends in New Zealand who would love to come on here. and. You know, <laughs> no. uh, we're only doing Perth guys. But That's, yeah, Perth guys. And I can't think. I mean, I've watched most of the shows yep. and... Ridge Carson and yeah. all the boys. All the, old, all the old guys there. I think I, this clip had you and, um, and Ray Van Ross on one of those yeah, things. On that end. video yeah. thing? Yeah. Yeah, um, Ray, that was good fun, that was. What was that for? That yeah. was for um, Jenny Seaton's oh, okay. morning television show. That was about yeah. 94, I think. Yeah. And uh, there was Peter Bull on drums and there was um, John Tony Fox Slater. Yeah. Playing harmonica and right. um, John Lemon on guitar yeah. and um, uh, who else was on it? Mainly the, it was mainly the troubadours, really. Yeah, yeah. And then there was um, obviously Ray Van Ross and me and uh, Reg. Yeah. And uh, who was the um, bass player? Um, yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, either. but it was just a lineup of all the old farts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
No, it's good. It's great. <laughs> Is there something that we don't know about you, Peter? Something that you're willing to disclose on this show? Um, something that even the wives <laughs> don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the wives are watching. Um, you don't have to answer. <laughs> no, <laughs> can't answer. Oh, really, I don't know. I'm, no. a, I'm an open book, Gary. An open book. I'm an open book. So w that's something we didn't know about you. I'm an open book? Yes, beautiful. Look, um... <laughs> Do you know that, actually, talking about books, I have hardly read a book in my life. Right. I read magazines, but I've never read cover to cover. Probably the only one I've ever read was that, um, what, it was the Charles de Gaulle assassination thing, where a uh, famous movie. Conspiracy book. Uh, the but, Jackal. Yeah, Day of the Jackal. Yeah, yeah. That's the only book I've ever read. Enjoyed yeah. it too. Yeah. I've got a friend who buys me a book every Christmas. I don't read books either. But I, I feel good then. I don't, I'm not no, the only I one. No, I read this book, one book a year. It's the book that she buys me. It's my wife's friend. And uh, she buys me things like, you know, Rolling Stones or, uh -huh. you know, music books and stuff like that. Interesting. Amy Winehouse, read her book. Really, really good books. Amy Winehouse, like, I never realised how good she was She's until she brilliant. died. Yeah. She is so good, that girl. Yeah. Or was so good. Yeah, absolutely. All the good, good die young, they say, don't they? Well, sadly. Jim Morrison and the millions of them. John Pickovich. And, and well, <laughs> well, he wasn't that young. He wasn't that young. And we must be bad. Younger than me. We must what? be bad because we didn't die. <laughs> We're going to die older. So. I must be very bad then. I'm going to get to 100 anyway. So. Look, uh, Peter, I've just got to say this. Uh, get the house coming out the way. Don't forget to subscribe to the profile on YouTube. Please like our videos, comment, and let us know who you think we should interview, and we'll get them on the show. And we'll try our best to get them on the show. And Pete, you know, I know you uh, just sort of dropped into Perth for a while. Uh, thanks so much for coming in to well, see us. My pleasure. Um, it's great to get an insight into, into your story and, and what you've done in the past, and uh, yeah, appreciate it. Thanks, Gary. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Good on you. Wonderful. That's it for this episode. Um, we'll see you next time. Thank you. How are you going when now? You me, I feel so <laughs> and when you're far away, I'm always free. If you want me to remain romantic, I always think you have to do.